when you're producing a feature package, it's really important to remember that the obvious angle to a piece is very rarely the real story. What we need to do as editors is dig deeper into the footage that we have and pull out the human emotion and the true core motivations or drivers behind the surface level narrative. And that's how we create compelling stories for our viewers. So for example, in this edit, I was working on a feature about Sweet Mickey's, which is a local candy store in Seattle that attracts a lot of locals and tourists. Now at first, the footage seemed pretty light. It was just a cute sweet shop selling candy and some nice interviews with customers and staff talking about how much they love the place. But as I say, there's always a deeper angle you can find. And in this case, when I was working through the interview footage, Randy, the owner, explained that the shop was actually a tribute to his grandmother, who raised him after his mum passed when he was just a small child. And so my grandmother said, I'll take all four and keep them together. So we went to live with Grandma Mickey. It was clear to me then that this piece shouldn't just be about the nice candy that the store has to offer, but about the respect that Randy has for his grandmother and the subsequent value he places on being part of a strong local community. Tackling a feature piece like this where you have a lot of footage to wade through can seem like a bit of a daunting task because you have to cut a lot of it back and of course you have to make sense of it and find your story to take the viewer on a journey. Everyone has a different method for editing something like this but the way I like to start is by bringing all my interviews down onto the timeline and working through them clip by clip. So cutting out any parts not needed. So the questions being asked for example would be one, I would just trim that out. And as I watch, I label each section with an overlay title so I can go back and quickly see exactly what material I've got to work with. Once that's done, I scrub through all of the B-roll clips to pre-trim them before bringing them down onto the timeline. And I'm not really watching them here, I'm just scrubbing through, cutting out any messy parts that I know I won't be able to use in the final edit, like a piece that's out of focus or a messy shot, for example. And once I'm done, I'm left with a sequence of quality B-roll shots I can view all in one place to quickly add to my sequence later on. So now I have all my footage on the timeline, I can start constructing the feature package. And I always think it's important to tackle the interviews first and write the voiceover second, as I want the characters in the story to lead the narrative. That's really important. So the voiceover is going to bounce off the interviewees as opposed to trying to get the interviews to fit the voiceover. I want the people in the story to lead the narrative as much as possible. So now I highlight sections of the interview where the person on screen has said something either really meaningful or important to the story, or even, and I love doing this, just a throwaway phrase that I can wheedle into the edit, which shows their personality a little more. Licorice Lois loves her licorice. Once I've done this, I assemble all the interview clips in a rough order at the beginning of the timeline, and that's gonna form the structure of the story. Notice that I'm keeping all of the bits of the interview that I haven't necessarily chosen at this stage, because I might need it later, I don't know. And then once I've got my kind of structure panned out at the beginning, I'm gonna write my voiceover to add context to the story and take the audiences on a journey, being careful to bounce off what the characters say in the piece. I add blank clips which represent where my voiceover goes, that helps me pan out the structure a bit better. And in this process, it's not uncommon for me to add new bits of interview, swap the order around, delete sections, you know, really play with the structure of the piece until I'm happy and that the whole thing flows and would make sense even if I was to close my eyes and just listen to the audio of the story from start to finish. I always find that to be a good test. When that's all recorded and timed well, that now forms the backbone of my edit. We've got the voiceover and we've got the interview clips. And then I go about layering B-roll onto the sequence, choosing the best clips that will work well with each stage of the story. I do think this stage of the edit is often rushed and B-roll can sometimes be seen as a way to cover any voiceover or blank spaces on a timeline. But it's important to remember that adding B-roll is such a crucial stage of the creative storytelling process it's used to add context, unravel the narrative, control the pace of the edit. So, you know, have a lot of fun here. Use lots of different editing techniques. I love to play around with transitions, J and L cuts, adding speed ramping effects and so on until I'm happy. 
Finishing a feature package is such a rewarding feeling because you're essentially taking a bunch of footage that could have gone in any direction and you've made it into a beautiful piece that you can look on and actually tell a story. And if you're anything like me, you'll be watching it again and again and again. Until the next one. In the heart of Ballard, Sweet Mickey's isn't just a candy store, it's a place where nostalgia, community and love for family come together, one sweet treat at a time. So I have the black currant ones, which are really hard to get down there by themselves. And I also have sour jelly babies, which are super hard to get. And you can only get them in certain places in England. Doctor Who's favorite candy. Having served up a sugar rush here in Seattle for the past 13 years, Randy Brinker knows a thing or two about turning a passion into a community staple. I always wanted to have a connection to a neighborhood, kind of like we had when I was a child and it has grown to be what I wanted it to be, which is a neighborhood candy store where people come and build their own memories with their own grandchildren or their own children. At Sweet Mickey's, memories are woven into every treat. I love a candy shop, like, I really love a candy shop. Whether it's through nostalgic candies that take us back to simpler times. I've been a fan of licorice ever since I'm seven years old. Licorice Lois loves her licorice. Or the joy that comes with trying something new. I like the weird candies. But for Randy, the store is about more than satisfying a sweet tooth. Instead, it honours the grandmother that raised him, Grandma Mickey. When my mother passed away, when I was just a seven-year-old boy, there was four of us siblings, and she wanted us all to be together. We went to live with Grandma Mickey. One thing I remember is it was always dessert first. And I think that was a way of bringing us to the table. Um, but to give us, you know, half a cookie, a scoop of ice cream or whatever, and then go on to dinner, which we always had to finish or we couldn't get off the table. So sometimes the green beans went in my pocket. Well, there's no danger of running into a vegetable here. Only a vast selection of treats, including Randy's infamous homemade fudge that even Willy Wonka himself would approve of. I got this idea from buying too many Girl Scout uh, cookies because I can't tell those little girls no. You put in good ingredients, you get good fudge. Owning a small business has a connection to the community and, and being part of somebody's life and, and being part of their memory and being part of their happiness. I think it gives a sense of belonging and a sense of who you are. And it brings me a lot of joy when the kids come in so happy. We have an open sample policy here. I, I always like them to be able to try what they're getting. Um, if it's okay with you, they can sample anything and everything. It's just a great feeling to see happy people come in, especially in the world that we live in. Happiness is, and joy and love is probably something we need more of. After all, life really is too short not to enjoy life's simple pleasures with the people that matter most. Perhaps, just like Grandma Mickey, we could all stand to have a little dessert before dinner.